Okay, if you're scared, say you're scared, right? I'm a little bit scared. Okay, this morning is the last part, and that's where you take the grain coat, which is in this batch is kind of a light gray color, and you mix it, every single bit of it, you pour it into this mixing cup that they give you, and then you fill the little thing back up with water and shake it real good because you're making sure that you get every little bit of the pigment that's in there. And that one's really, really thick, almost like maybe a watery putty or something like that. And then you mix it all together, fill it up to the 12, so you have 12 ounces all together in the end. And then once you get it mixed up, it's almost thin as water, you pour it in your pan. and you pre-wet your little roller and then wring it out so it's, you know, been dampened so that it's not gonna absorb all that, but it's, you know, not wringing wet. And you do the same thing with this thing. So this thing has been wet all over and then wring out. And you start on the top board. So I guess I'm gonna start in here and then move down. And you go about three feet, like if you're going, get a ladder if you need to, if you're doing it up, up tall, you know, so that you can reach it really good, because it's going to be important to go as close to you as you can to stay in, in between the lines that you made with your tape. And once you roll on a section with this, you can go as wide as you're comfortable with going. I'm going to do this whole section, and down here I'll probably do at least half if not the whole section there and then you come back and wipe it with this and that's supposed to give it the grain effect so here we go it's probably a little bit difficult because this is a tight area and it's not a full um what do you call it a full roll if you have any um runs you just kind of smear them into that next line which i just got some there from pushing too hard because i'm trying to get up in that section there make ring this a little bit more i guess i didn't ring that good enough and then you just wipe over it and i can only wipe so much in there there's not much room okay i'm going to do the next one Know what you do when that doesn't go all the way to your end I guess you smear that with your I think you're just supposed to do it one time but I'm having trouble because of my tight space to roll real good. Here we go. Trying to keep that straight, but because I'm at my ends right here, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Okay, hopefully this will be the easier part.
I wonder it just a tad and stop right there. second swamp I went up over the one above it a little bit so I'm going to try to pull that back off I don't know how I'm supposed to get to those edges couldn't really imagine how this was going to look like uh, boards, but now I see it. it. It doesn't, you wouldn't think that would much look like wood grain, but it, it really does actually. The stripes that it leaves on there. See, this glove is lined, so every time I take my hand out of it, I'm pulling out the lining. It's, it's got plastic inside it, I guess, to keep this off of my hand. This would be much easier on a flat away wall issues I'm having are because it's underneath something and I'm having to bend my head and my arm. I like that a lot. I'm going to go on down now through this row and then come back and start over. Making sure there's no runs there. It's very light difference. There you can tell a little bit more of the difference. But when we pull the tape off, we'll be able to tell a lot more, I think. Way under here, there's like another piece of tape and a half of a row. So I'm going over that one. Then I'm gonna come back and make sure that I'm running from what you will see from the bottom with my roller. If I wasn't going to paint these countertops next, I would be more careful about where I was laying my glove.
some runs and I'm wiping those off real quick. the next row down. I wondered about this part and I'm actually just shocked. I'm so surprised at how much that looks like wood grain. Probably shouldn't go up horizontal there, but I really have no choice to get it under that outlet. down since I went this far. Or I've gone this far, I suppose. Would be correct. fingers in there. You want to try to stay within the board you're working on each time so that there will be more differentiation between the boards when you're done. So I'll probably go back over it all in just a second to double check that. I can't stand back here and work and get my stuff together with my glasses on and I can't see up close with the glasses. So this is, this is old lady stuff. Don't have LASIK surgery.
And part of my issue here is the side of my hand, size of my hands. My hand, the gloves are a little bit big for my hands. Going back now and making sure the lines are relatively straight. And I don't know whether I can pull you around to see this corner or not. Let's see. Oh, let's, let me straighten this real quick. I'm finding that it's easier for me to go through here with the back of my hand because of my hand size. So there's my tip. If your hands are small, go at it backhanded. I like it a lot. This only has to dry, I'm going to double check it before I take anything off, but I believe this said this only has to dry like 15 minutes and then you can pull the tape off, so we'll definitely be doing that this morning before work. touched over it with my glove. Just kind of smearing that for now and then I'll blend it in. Take it off and do it, do it this way for that part. My pants are back. Yeah, I'm having to look at my butt. That would be like the little bit of shadow that you would see in a corner, I do believe. really convenient that this roller you know is the size of the board
something I noticed on the one that they have on their website is like their boards are almost alternating lighter, darker, lighter, darker, which would help to differentiate the boards a little more. And I'll probably try that. That's in a shadowed corner anyway. I see a little bit of a line right here, but I don't know if that's... Nope, that's on the underpaint. I can't tell. I'm going to go over it again. This one's definitely on the underpaint. going darker and lighter. I'm going to do that idea just right here. I'm just going to make this particular one darker because I just went over these a little bit. And this is not anything that's recommended on their pay, on their site. This is just me thinking I'm being artistic. Trying to make sure I differentiate enough between the boards. because I want them kind of splotchy. I like that look. So, oops, sorry. I'm going to go through now and make, I guess the shadow's hitting down on this one, so I'm going to go down and make it a little bit darker. Same thing on the very bottom one. Like I said, this is just something I'm doing that's not something that's in the instructions. So you do that at your own risk. We shall see what it does. Being the wife of a woodworker, I know that wood has variations and I like to see those variations. feather it out here at the end. I like it. It's probably a little too dark right there. Okay, let's get the last one over there. try to take a picture of that part from my blog.
I'm still standing here. I'm just right behind because I'm getting my tablet to take a picture of that portion. Right in there. There we go. And that has its drawing. Got to document everything for one when you have memory issues and for two when you're wanting to make sure that you share every step of people who may be going to do it too. Trying to get at this a little bit quicker and wipe a little more off because I want this board lighter because the one above it's darker. This way. I never dreamed using this wool glove would be able to give us somewhat of a wood grain print. Blows me away. Learn something new every day. I'm pleased I get so excited when some, when it gets to this part. I get to chew it soon. Okay, now we've got this one last area. I've got two outlets, a cable outlet and a, an electrical outlet over here. That I'm trying to be careful of and get in these corners really good. I'm going to do that with my finger. Can you see that? You know, there's always the recommended way, and that's the way that I recommend that 
that you do things, but you know, these tools are provided. Don't ever be afraid to change something a little bit. You know, don't, don't ever be afraid to take that glove off and use it in your hand. Just because it's recommended to do it the other way and that's the best way, that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, make it your own and, and try to change things up a little bit if you need to. It's, it's okay. It's always okay. Now this is the one that's darker over there. Now this is the lighter one. I'm going to try to lighten this up around that line a little. To differentiate between those two boards. One last piece. Better take a picture of that. Sorry, but this is part of what I do. Got a little above that line, so I'm making sure to get that off first. And there we go. I'm nervous now it's time to let's turn this around. Come back over here and start removing the tape. Oh man, I'm gonna hyperventilate. <laughs> This is pretty gratifying here, y'all.
I think this might be a good time for a picture of that part. believe how cool and long strips it's coming off. Isn't that awesome? Put this one up here and pull them all together. Like I'm working a marionette. This is going to stop at that corner because I cut it at that corner. Having better luck with the little tape than the big tape. There we go. Come on, baby. Get on out of there. This one wasn't on a piece of blue tape, so it didn't have a like a tab to start it with. It is pulling off, the tape is pulling off here and there. A little bit of this gray undertone coat, but it just looks, it looks very natural like it's supposed to be that way. with the staying power of that and that it didn't get, you know, paint didn't run behind it. I have paint run behind this big tape all the time. It must be very good tape. usually very skeptical at the beginning of every project and pleased at the end. Okay, now um, we just have to let this wait until um, about two hours and then it's ready to, you know, hang stuff back on it if that's what you do in your kitchen. I have, you know, like the cup thing that I'm hanging, but I don't really have any pictures hanging back there. I think that turned out pretty cool. 
If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. It's been a fun project. And thanks, uh, Johnny Granite, G-I-A-N-I Granite.com. It's where you get your stuff. Bye.